This is a robotic horse and buggy that could pull me around town. Now it's more than just an expensive toy. This is a fusion of two completely different worlds. There's a lot of Amish and Mennonite that live in the community around me, but I find I know very little about their way of life. So this project aims to change that. I want to combine the experience of a robotics engineer with the age old knowledge of the Amish into a single project. There are two main challenges that we have to sort out for this project. The first is we're going to need a robot and to figure out how to actually drive that like a horse. The second is we're going to need a nice set of wheels. We're going to need a chariot that the robot can pull around town. Now the laws in my area don't actually allow me to get my own horse on my yard. I checked. So a robot seems like the best solution like usual. I could get a robot like Frank, put a fake horse on top, a couple coconuts banging together so it sounds like a horse. That would be strong enough, but it wouldn't look anything like a horse. Horses are smart. They would see right through that. So I need to find a robot that already kind of resembles a horse. Adam Savage tried something similar to this with a spot from Boston Dynamics, and it worked for the most part, but wasn't strong enough to do hills. And Adam Savage is definitely lighter than me. So I'm going to need something a little bit beefier. As far as I know, the B1 from Unitree is the largest consumer quadruped robot that you can get. So obviously, that's what we're going to use. Like Spot, the B1 has 12 motors, cameras all around it, lithium batteries, but it's stronger and can actually be fully submerged in water. Hopefully, we won't need the robot to be protected against water, but some of our projects do tend to get a little wet sometimes. While well, Maddie keeps the dog busy, let's figure out how we're going to control it. Moving it around with the controller is fine, but I want it to be more convincing. I want it to be able to trick a horse. To do that, we're going to actually have to add reins to it so I can control it the way you would a real horse. The only real problem with this is I don't know how to drive a horse, but my neighbor Simon sure does. Simon and his horse Twyla are going to teach me how to actually drive a horse. Here we go. Simon gave me a really quick intro before he handed me the reins. And you have the car. Right. Aside from us almost getting hit by a car, I was kind of a horse and pro. Yeah, so... Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I should have warned you. No, thank you, you for not letting me die. <laughs> it turns out that driving a trained horse is actually really easy. If you relax the reins, the horse will move forward. If you pull left or pull right, the horse will turn pulling back on both the reins, and the horse will stop. Whoa, there we got it. Yeah. Awesome. I took what I learned from Simon and turned it into these. Each one has a potentiometer, which is a resistor that changes how much resistance it has as you turn it. It's what would be inside of knobs in any of your electronics. The controls and the code for this are pretty simple. There is one solid problem with this design though. Since the springs are constantly pushing the reins forward, the robot by default is going to try to run away, which makes it really hard to turn off. One button and some wires later though, and that's all fixed up. Now that the dog's all done, we gotta start working on the buggy. Making a buggy is definitely in the Amish wheelhouse. This is Doug. Doug owns a buggy business outside of town, and luckily he was interested in helping me out. We measured everything up, talked through the plans. Three hours later, I got a call. It was already done. I don't have any metalworking equipment, but I do have a few 3D printers. So I use those to create a little mount to actually attach the chariot onto the back of the dog. It worked well enough, 
until it didn't. The dog can pull me, but the mount I designed was not strong enough. A few more iterations later and I ended up with a new mount. It can even pull me up hills. We're gonna be heading around town in my trusty steed. I need to decorate it a bit. Chariot's looking good, but this is a dog-drawn carriage. We need a horse-drawn carriage. Hold on, let me print something. Oh, he's so cute. He's all head and no neck. This looks, looks like Danny DeVito. We brought Danny to an Amish neighbor's farm to introduce him to some other horses. A race was the obvious way to see if he was worthy, but as soon as Danny was pulled out of the car, he broke. But I mean, it wouldn't be robotics if he was worthy. Then it would be easy. I managed to wrangle just enough pieces out of the trunk of my car to fix them just in time before it got dark. This is Apples, Danny's competitor. The race was down to the wire, but Danny won by a foot. There was a couple really interesting things that came up while doing this project. The first is that if you're driving a horse and you just let it go, uh, she probably would go home. That's not a feature that Danny currently has, but if it's something you think that I should add, just put a comment below and I'll see. The next is Doug. All he wanted for helping me with the chariot was a picture of the final project so that he could put it in his annual buggy calendar. That is probably my favorite part of this entire project. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.